Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at setting up your airport stream so you can access your Macs from outside of the house. Okay, so you're outside of your house and you want to access one of the Macs inside your house. You've got a DSL or cable modem router and you've got your airport extreme. How do you get from outside your house through those to one of your Macs inside the house? Well, you can set that up in the airport extreme airport utility. So you can find the airport utility in your utilities folder in your applications folder. When you launch it, it should connect here. You see the little green light to your airport extreme. Click on manual setup to go to some of the more specific controls. So once you're connected, you want to go to the internet section and then the DHCP section, which is the dynamic host configuration protocol. This is what assigns IP addresses to the Macs in your house. So there are two types of IP addresses. There's internet IP addresses, which are worldwide. And if you've got one, it's yours and assigned only to you in the entire world. Then you've got your local IP address. That's the one inside your house. Think of it as like the apartment building address and then the apartment number. So in order to get to your computer, you've got to first go to your house, which is your internet IP address. And then you've got to go through that to your local IP address to the specific computer. So DHCP is what assigns local IP addresses to each of your Macs. Now, it'll assign these in the order that they come. So as new Macs log on, it'll assign an address here according to some rules. But you can tell it that you want each of your Macs to have a very specific local IP address no matter what. And you do that in the DHCP reservation section. Press the plus button, create a name for a reservation, and then you're going to use Mac access addresses to assign it. So every computer and every device has a unique Mac address number. And for a Mac, you can go into your network settings, click on either Ethernet or Airport, and go to Advanced, and you can find it there. In the case of this computer, which is hooked up by Ethernet, I can find it here, Ethernet ID. It's usually called Airport ID if you're hooked up by Airport. And it's a set of numbers that looks like this. So you can see here, I've set this machine, the Mac Pro, to be this IP address. If I edit it, and go in here, I can see I've entered in the MAC address here and the IP address here. And it knows, the Airport Extreme knows, to always match the computer with this MAC address to the, this IP address. So now I always know what address this MAC is going to be on my local network. Now the next step is to map a port, which will map a service, like file sharing, to that MAC. Back in Airport Utility, you'll find this under Advanced Port Mapping. Now, here you've got a bunch of different port mappings that you can make. So let's add one here. And you can set up to choose a service like, say, personal file sharing. And here it automatically fills in the TCP ports, so you don't have to worry about port numbers. You just have to choose personal file sharing. Now you have to choose the private IP address. So if we wanted to set it to, say, 214, we could. And if I were to continue with this, it would go ahead and set up a mapping of port 548 through the Airport Extreme to that specific computer. So the point is, if I try to connect from outside my house to the IP address inside my house and use file sharing, it will immediately know to route file sharing to that single Mac. And you could do the same thing for other services like screen sharing. Better yet, you can set your own port numbers. So you saw how 548 was set up to be File sharing? Well, I can say, well, 549 will be file sharing on my second Mac and 550 will be file sharing on my third Mac. So from outside my house on a Mac, I can do Command K, do AFP colon slash slash, which says file sharing, the IP address of my house, and this will connect me via file sharing to that Mac in my house. Now, if I wanted to do colon 548, that would do exactly the same thing, but it already knows that file sharing, the AFP protocol, is for port 548. If I had set up 549 and 550, like I mentioned, I could do 549, and that should route to my second map. 550 will map to my third Mac. Now you can use VNC instead of AFP to do screen sharing, and you can set up similar port mappings to map the main screen sharing address to a single Mac, and then come up with alternate uh, ports for other Macs in your house as well. Now, if you're already using Back to My Mac, you don't need to do any of this. Back to My Mac will figure it all out. Another thing Back to My Mac will figure out is what your IP address is at home. Because if you have a standard DSL or cable modem connection, your IP address is changing all the time, which means you don't know how to connect your house because you don't know the IP address of your house. 
usually you can pay your internet provider a few more dollars a month to give you a static IP address and it's well worth it if you need this type of service. Now if you don't happen to have an Airport Extreme, you have another router, well you can still do the same thing. Almost all the routers have the same functionality, they're just called something different and you're going to have to know the port numbers used by Apple for different things like file sharing and screen sharing because it's not going to have those, that little pop-up menu that I showed you. But you can do it with almost any router setup. Of course, the modem or router provided by your internet service provider could also have a firewall built into it that's blocking these ports. So you may want to check into that too and see if there's any documentation that will help you set it up. In general, I find a third of the time this stuff works right away. Another third of the time, it takes some fooling around with the modem that your internet service provider gave you. Another third of the time, it just doesn't seem to work no matter what you do. Perhaps there's something going on at your ISP just preventing it from happening. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.